Now, with regards to roofs and ceilings, the R value requirements are based on insulation between the framing or above the cavity. They must meet or exceed the R values in those tables. Um, also, attic hatches have to be sealed and have to have the same insulation level as the floor around them. Vertical hatches in and knee walls also have to have the same insulation level as the wall insulation. They also have to be air sealed as well. Now, another thing that's important to recognize is that um, if you use raised heel trusses, you get a little bit of a credit. Sometimes they're called energy heel trusses. So let me uh, explain to you what we're talking about here. Uh, if you have uh, the table, let's say, requires an R38, the, the code knows that where that insulation goes out to the outside edge of the roof, where the sloping section of the roof meets the plate line, that's going to be greatly compressed. So if you use a raised heel truss, that means that you can derate your entire attic assembly requirement, your insulation, to R30. So if you did require R38 and then you used the energy heel truss, you could get by with an R30. That's sort of a reward for uh, using energy heel trusses. And the reason why these raised heel trusses work better is because it allows you to get a full thickness of insulation all the way to the outside edge thrust. I'll show a couple of pictures of that in a moment. Uh, and also it's important to recognize that attic insulation with um, you know, undersized rafters to allow R38 in the cathedral ceiling, you can go to an R30 if you have less than 500 square feet of area on no more than 20% of the total roof area. So uh, there's a little bit of an exemption there if we have smaller framing members in cathedral ceilings. Now, what I was mentioning earlier was this concept of what happens when you have standard roof trusses. You can see that the insulation is greatly compressed at this location, and that actually leads to mold problems and even can lead to eye stamps. As you can see here in this picture, that the space between the upper plate and the top of that roof deck is a pretty, pretty small space. So that means that insulation is going to be compressed. If it's compressed, guess what? It's not going to be its full R value. So when we look at uh, something like a raised heel truss, that allows you to get that full thickness of insulation all the way uh, at the perimeter of the gable ends. Section 402 deals with above grade walls and the, and the prescriptive requirements in the code is pretty clear. It's also important to recognize not to forget uh, the insulate, the rim joist or band joist areas. Spray foam is a great application for that because it totally fills the cavity, also acts like a good uh, air barrier. Um, with regards to mass wall insulation, that can be a little confusing. Um, for example, in Climate Zone 4, they require R5 if that insulation is on the exterior of the mass wall. Now, the reason for that is, is the goal is, is try to use mass as what it's supposed to do. That is to keep the building cooler, and the way that you do that is by preventing a lot of solar heat gain to heat up that mass wall. So if you have insulation on the exterior, that insulation is more effective than it is than if it's on the interior. So what the code says is that if you have uh, over 50% of your insulation on the exterior, it can be R5. But if you have more than half of the R value on the interior, that means you have to go to an R10 uh, to increase the value of the insulation there. Again, the whole concept is, is to prevent the decoupling from the mass wall uh, from, the, from the environment, interior environment. When it comes to steel frame, there's an equivalency table that we got to pay close attention to. Um, and the reason for that is, is that steel frame members conduct energy at a faster rate than do wood frame members. Also, uh, what we're trying to say is there's more thermal bridging. So, for example, if we have a, a wood framed R value requirement of, say, R30 in the attic, and we had, a, say, a, a trust a steel frame ceiling, uh, we would be required to go R38. In other words, beef up the insulation, or we would have to do R30 plus an R3 continuous insulation like a foam or an R26 plus an R5 insulation. And then that follows through for the rest of, for, for walls and for ceilings and floors. Now, uh, floors, um, they also have some specific requirements. Um, this, this, and that basically what we're talking about here is the space between conditioned and unconditioned spaces, and that could be like a crawl space or an unheated basement or even outdoor air. It's really important to remember that the insulation must be in contact with the bottom of the subfloor. So we, we see here that this is a pretty good example of a poor insulation job. This photo, as you can see, is a much better example of a good floor insulation installation.